Hello everyone, welcome to Lost in the Real. This is Sean, and today we are going over Aubrey Plaza's new film, Black Bear. And after this movie, all I could think was, what the hell did I just watch? So Black Bear is written and directed by Lawrence Michael Levine, and it stars the incredible Aubrey Plaza, Christopher Abbott, and also Sarah Goodon. This movie is about a filmmaker played by Aubrey Plaza, who is retreating from the outside world to go to an artist's retreat, which is in the woods, in a cabin, and completely isolated. And she meets this couple who owns the cabin, and they basically start conversation. And that's where I'm going to end the synopsis there, because to give anything else away would be to ruin Black Bear, and I don't want to do that. So let's get started about the positives of the film. The performances. Aubrey Plaza is literally dynamite in this movie. I love her so much because she really shows so much versatility in these indie dramas that she keeps picking. And a lot of them she's producing as well. And this role is so meaty for her. And she is a chameleon. And I'm not going to lie. Near the end of the film, I was like, damn. Like, she should get some awards for this movie because she is that good. Also, Christopher Abbott and Sarah Gadon are wonderful. They are extremely uncomfortable as a couple together, but that's for good reason. And they really just kind of make your skin crawl a little bit. So talking about making your skin crawl. When this movie uh, started, and it's a weird situation to begin with because Aubrey Plaza's character is a stranger to this couple. So they don't know each other at all, and the conversations they started having were just really uncomfortable. And the couple is contradicting each other. They don't seem to like each other. Uh, Sarah Gadon's character is pregnant, and she's drinking way too much, and you can tell he's really uncomfortable by it. And the whole thing just was an exercise in uneasiness. And that's literally the first, like, 20 minutes of the movie. And I was just kind of, like, sitting there, like, squirming, like, oh, this is, I can't do this. Uh, and then it starts progressing, and I kept having a couple of questions, and I think viewers are going to have these questions, too, is what the hell is going on? Where is this film going? And also, why do I care? These are three questions that are going to continue throughout the rest of the film, including that pivotal plot shift uh, that happens. And I'm sure if you know anything about the movie or seen the trailer, you'll kind of know a little bit about that. But you just have no idea what's going on the whole entire time. So that's going to turn some viewers off. They'll probably even turn the movie off. But I would recommend keeping it on just because of what you're going to get at the end. And I will tell you what you're going to get at the end in just a little bit. So the film really keeps the viewer at arm's length at all times, and also really on the edge of insanity. And the thing that keeps you going is the fact that the writing is absolutely riveting, and the performances are so good, you can't really stop watching. And one thing that you're going to realize throughout the film is that all of the characters are lying. You can't trust any of them. And then you start realizing that you can't really trust the director or the writer of this film either. Everyone is lying. There is no truth. And that will frustrate some, but it really kept me going because once you once that kind of clicks in your head, you're like, hey, this film is playing tricks on me. It's kind of fun. <laughs> so really deep down at its core, Black Bear is about the creative process and it's about how life imitates art and art imitates life and I kept thinking as the movie kept going that this really almost put me in the mindset of what happened behind the scenes of Stanley Kubrick filming The Shining and what he did to Shelley Duvall and the uh, emotional uh, and mental torture that he 
did to her to get the part that he wanted and to make his vision come alive. And I also think that it kind of imitates The Shining as well because they're in the woods and they're isolated and you can kind of tell there's like their mental states are all kind of over the place. So that is kind of what I took away from it uh, to not give anything away, of course. And I said that I would tell you why you should finish the movie. You're not going to get any answers. So if you like things tightly wrapped up with a bow, you're not going to get that. And you probably just shouldn't even try to watch Black Bear. But what you are going to get is complete freedom to interpret this film however way you want to. I think this film is going to be a really fun conversation piece for viewers. So I think people should watch this with a group of people, safely of course, and, you know, be able to have conversation afterwards. Because I promise you, every single person is going to have a different view of what this movie is about, where it was actually going, and why you actually cared. So that's what I absolutely loved about Black Bear. There's about a million interpretations. None of them are right, and none of them are wrong. So I will be giving Black Bear three and a half coffee stains out of five. I will remember this movie way into next year and probably for years to come. It is pretty unforgettable. But like I said before in the review, the film does keep you at arm's length and there is a feeling of coldness that you get from it. But it is a puzzle piece that is absolute worth putting together until the very end because then you'll see your own big picture. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Real, guys. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Also, like the video if you liked it. And please comment down below. Let us know what you think of Black Bear. What did you think actually happened? Because it's probably going to be a lot different than me or anybody else. Take care, guys.